guys, welcome back to Coral Tree Homestead. If you haven't been here before, welcome. We are a family of six on the New South Wales, south coast of Australia, and we aim to grow our own food. Uh, we've been on this property for five years and practicing homesteading for the past two years. Uh, and so I'm going to do two videos. I'm gonna do one about animals and the progress that we've got there, and one about vegetables, because I feel like the videos will just drag out way too long. So. Stay tuned for the next installment of this as well. Okay, so pigs at the moment, we have four large pigs, four breeders. Um, we have Skinny and Gwen, and they are both pregnant. They're in with the boar. Uh, Skinny just had her litter of piglets a little while ago, so we've almost sold half of them, and the other half we will grow out um, for people that want them uh, for meat. The other large sow that we have, she, uh, we've had her for probably two years now, to the large mother sow, she hasn't gone on to heat or um, given us any babies. So we are going to turn her into um, food and salami for us. So we'll look to do that quite soon. We're uh, six weeks away from spring, so we're a little late for the salami window. Uh, you wanna do salami when it's cold so you can hang it. But that's okay, we have um, some older sort of cool rooms that we can hang it in and control the temperature in there. Uh, so we'll look to do that soon with the largest Berkshire that we have. The Berkshires are the black ones and the, uh, the white and the black ones are saddlebacks. We do a cross um, and they're both heritage breeds and we grow them for mainly their flavour. They're a little bit more slow growing than your um, regular white pigs that you would get in the supermarket and in the butchers, but um, we're focusing more on flavour. Uh, we feed quite a lean uh, food so that the pigs aren't too fat. Um, I don't really like eating pigs that are super fatty. You know, you get that really sick feeling when you have like pork bellies. So uh, we're looking at like a lean, um, well marbled pork. And that's why we do the heritage breeds. Uh, so Gwen, this will be her first litter of piglets. So I'm excited to see at the end of September when she is due and then Skinny's due at the end of October. So uh, I'm excited to see those new piglets and that will be uh, pretty well a Saddleback, um, Wessex Saddleback full breed. So we haven't crossed there. Um, at the moment the pigs are turning over a veggie garden. There you can see that square plot around that tree is going to be where we plant our tomatoes in the springtime. And then we've got that more permanent pen right there to be able to put the piglets uh, when they're being grown. I usually put them into that pen and grow them in that pen. The garden that we're creating, I mentioned a little while ago that we are extending the veggie garden out into that paddock. Uh, we deal a lot with kangaroos, rabbits, possums, you name it. Um, they make it hard to grow veggies, so that's a nice big fenced paddock that we can use. So the pigs are at the moment uh, in the veggie garden area, just prepping the beds. We also started to add more soil to uh, those bigger beds. And I really look to integrate um, the animals into the veggie garden. And that's also another reason why it's good that it's fenced and it's really well fenced. It's chicken mesh with um, a bottom electrified hot tape. It's a very well fenced paddock happened to know a fencer. Uh, that should keep all the unwanted um, wildlife out of there, hopefully. Uh, we might just battle with the birds a little bit, but I'm excited, hopefully this spring to start growing in there. Um, also, because we just need a lot more room. We've got um, twice as many veggies this year that we want to be growing um, because we want to not only preserve a lot of that uh, harvest, but we also want to share it with our family and friends. So uh, looking to up that a little bit, or we'll put that in the next video. <laughs> I won't go down that rabbit hole. Um, the cows, so we this weekend are doing Pedro, our first calf. We are going to harvest him. Uh, we're actually calling in some help for that because I haven't uh, broken down cows um, as much as I've broken down lambs and pigs. So we're going to get a neighbor to help us with that. Um, but I'm excited to show you guys that because we will be using everything from the tongue to the tail, um, all the bones and the organs. So I'm excited to show you guys some um, cooking methods that we do um, and some preserving methods that we'll also do uh, with, with, that, with our first calf born here on the property.
Uh, Reggie, our second orphan calf, he is uh, still growing. He's um, about half the size of Pedro, so he will be our next cow. And then long term, we still want to have Maggie in milk. Hopefully she's pregnant. We still haven't got her preg tested, uh, but I'm really hoping that she's pregnant. If she is, she's due at the end of September also. So we'll see um, how we go with that. Otherwise, uh, depending on our funds, <laughs> we do long term hope to get a bull so that we don't have to AI Maggie again. Uh, we had a lot of trouble AIing Maggie because she wouldn't come onto heat. Um, and I'm thinking it's because she's alone. Well, she was alone at that stage. She didn't have, she had the horses, but no other cows around. So she was having trouble coming onto heat. We ended up doing something called a cedar, which is, uh, it's a tool that um, mimics the cow being pregnant. Then you take the tool out and they go into like an emergency cycle. And so that worked. So we did end up AIing her with a speckled park bull. They look a bit like a sort of a Dalmatian type cow um, and so I'm interested to see if she did take or not but uh, yeah we didn't get a preg tested so we'll just have to wait and see on that one but long term I do plan to get another cow um, so we'll have two cows in milk I'll probably look to transfer into um, a milk machine when both the cows are in milk just to save me a little bit of time and um, to reduce the contamination of the milk because at the moment our shelter doesn't have a roof or any sides So if it's a windy day or a rainy day um, The milk can tend to get a little bit contaminated. So with an electric milker um, Or a milking machine the milk goes straight into the machine and it doesn't it's not exposed to the air So might look to do that. However, if one cow is only in milk um, I do plan to offset them so we have milk all year round but both cows will be getting a rest. Um, I'll probably look to just hand milk one cow at a time and um, yeah so another bull so that we can be covering both those cows and that will obviously give us a calf each year from each of those cows uh, but also in the case of Reggie our other little calf um, he was an orphan so he was um, what they call a potty calf and so we bought him from a dairy farmer and we raised him on Maggie once Pedro the first calf had been weaned so he was weaned onto solid food what is she doing chili can you stay here stay here hey stay here yeah so um once the first calf was weaned Pedro what are you doing chill um then so um they have been on uh, hay, pasture hay, over winter. So next winter I look to possibly bulk buy some pasture hay. And long term I'd really like to uh, sod seed with some rye grass, which um, just means you sort of drill down and put the seeds in the ground. Um, and rye grass is a winter pasture, so it grows in the winter time. Right now our grass, get out of the bin, right now our grass is... Uh, summertime and springtime grass and so we don't have any feed over winter so definitely looking to um, get some pasture for the winter time but it takes a few years to establish so we'll have to bulk buy some hay for next winter yes mate the sheep we sold three of our dorpa sheep we had uh, how many dorpas did we have uh, four five we had six dorpas i've sold three I'm moving out of Dorper sheep. They're a hair sheep, so they don't grow wool and they're supposed to shed their hair, so you never have to shear them. Um, however, I want to experiment with another breed. We are going into Suffolk, uh, which is a wool breed, and I quite like their, um, their meat, their body structure. So we're going to look to move into Suffolk sheep. We have a ram on the way. We have two ewes already, um, but we, we're going to look to buy a few more ewes and also also that new ram. Um, so that's exciting. We're just well, like saving our money a little bit. <laughs> it's super expensive. So um, that should be coming soon. And we plan to fence off the larger paddocks out the front with a square mesh. And so the uh, sheep can move out the front then and um, have a lot more grass to eat and hopefully we'll be able to have a few more. At the moment we've only had them in the two smaller paddocks in the side here and um, the, I've only kept a few sheep because I don't want to um, overgraze that grass um, 
there's a quite a few animals in there. There's the geese in there that eat a lot of grass and the sheep, and they're only quite small paddocks, like half acre paddocks. So uh, I haven't got too many sheep, but I look to get a few more soon once we fence those front two paddocks. Um, our boundary fence needs um, updating anyway, it's falling down. So uh, the other thing is when we put them in the front paddock, um, there's a lot of fireweed, which we have a real problem with here and sheep eat fireweed. So the two smaller paddocks that they've been in currently don't have any fireweed. The paddocks out the front are absolutely overrun. In the past, we've tried to spray the fireweed and we've also tried to slash it, mow it, uh, with not much success. We always catch it a little bit too late. Um, we're not as diligent probably as we should be. Slashing is a big job. Uh, but the, once the sheep go in there, they will pretty well wipe out all that fireweed, I think. So uh, hopefully we can get a few of those paddocks fenced and be rotating the sheep through to knock out that fireweed and give them a bit more pasture. Chili? This is Chili. <laughs> good job, good girl. And she is an Australian Kelpie. She was given to us uh, from a good friend of ours and she's doing really well. She's only quite young and um, she hopefully will one day be a really helpful addition to the farm Went to chill. She has fantastic instinct, instincts for rounding up not only sheep but also the cows and so uh, I'm going to get a little bit of help training her very soon and hopefully she will eventually help me uh, round up the sheep that we get and um, the cows that we get. So right now she's a little bit of an overkill because we only have five sheep <laughs> and three cows. Um, but she's in training, so it's a good time to train her up while we don't have many animals and um, she should be a really helpful addition to the farm eventually. Uh, and then we still have Ray, he is currently in the house paddock uh, because he's a big sook. And he will eventually go back into taking care of the, the chickens and the geese once they start breeding again. Uh, like I said, we are six weeks away from springtime, so very soon I'll be putting all the geese into their smaller breeding pens, and I've already started to sort out my chickens. Um, and hopefully this year I look to start meat chickens. I'm not sure if we will get to that, because it's quite a little bit of a big operation. Chili, it's quite a big operation to start more chickens, um, but we will probably reduce our laying flock a little bit. So uh, last season we had about 40, 45 laying hens and that was a really great way of sort of covering feed costs uh, and I definitely look to do that again this year. However, I did sell off a lot of my chickens just before winter because I knew that they stopped laying. So I sold them off to a lady. Uh, she was happy to take them. Obviously she probably had another source of feed. We pay for our feed. Um, some people feed them sandwiches and um, scraps and things like that. So she was happy to take them. She got a good deal. I sold them for five bucks each. So um, yeah, just before winter started, I sold a heap of the chickens. And so we're really just starting fresh. So uh, I will either have to, I think there's about 15 hens. So we won't have as many eggs this year, but still on a smaller scale, you know, I can be making a little bit of cost back uh, by selling the eggs. So yeah, 15 eggs a day, <laughs> that's enough for us. Um, and enough to sell a carton a day. So um, that should be good. But I do long-term look to raise the chicks over the winter time for them to lay in the, in the springtime. So uh, I can, de it's definitely doable. Just have to get organized to be able to, yeah, um, raise those chicks over the winter time. So they're smaller, they're not eating as much. And uh, if they're not laying anyway, I might as well be having fresh um, chickens each laying season. So I look to do that. Um, the horses at the moment, we are taking down our round pen. At the moment, I, uh, we are taking down our round pen, um, our yards that we normally work the horses in. Occasionally, we don't work them very often. Uh, but we have a little kid's pony that I really want to... Um, so we're going to move the cattle panels, the, the round pen, we're going to move it to grass, to a different paddock, and hopefully fence off the little pony. 
so I can eat more easily, give the little boys, my two little boys, um, horse riding lessons. So that's something we do for fun. Um, and sort of five or six is when I started. So I'm looking forward to starting those little boys um, horse riding. We have going at the moment is rabbits. So we've had rabbits for about a month and a half now. We've had one litter of, well, I should say two litters. We've had two litters of little rabbits, bunnies, um, Keiths, I think they're called. And um, that went really well. We did lose a few. Uh, my nesting boxes weren't quite, quite right and they actually fell out and we've lost a few. Um, I actually thought the mum would sort of lift them up and put them back in the box like a cat would, but rabbits obviously don't do that. So uh, I need to make a bit of a better uh, rabbit um, nesting box or burrow uh, so that we don't lose so many next uh, litter but one of the rabbits had 11 and one of the rabbits had six so quite a few uh, we've already eaten uh, five yeah we've already eaten seven and they were really uh, good and I'm excited to show you some some different cooking methods methods that we do for the rabbit as well who are going to improve their setup a little bit um, long term I do plan to have like a rabbit tractor that we can pull along the ground uh, right now I'm cutting the grass and giving it to them fresh or the carrot tops and different things that I feed from the veggie garden we're, we're cutting that and giving it to them as well as um, loose and chaff or um, it's called alfalfa also uh, alfalfa chaff and uh, it's just like a chopped up hay basically and we are also feeding oats doing really well at the moment we just have the three breeding pairs females and a male uh, and yeah so that's exciting because I really like rabbit it's really it's quite delicious it's actually considered a white meat not a red meat um, so it actually doesn't have any game flavor uh, and it's quite clean. It just tastes really like chicken and they're so much easier to prepare um, To skin and gut and, and things like that. They're really easy to prepare uh, You know as opposed to chickens which um, You have to pluck and things like that. So I'm excited to show you guys that also And I think that's about it. So uh, I'm just starting my seedlings now and I will look to um, update you guys on the veggie garden and the fruit and veg that we're growing this year. Thanks guys.